Who wants some good news, ladies and gentlemen? Who feels like a little bit of good news this Wednesday afternoon? Because we've got a little bit. We've got a little bit of a silver lining here. It hasn't been a great week. It hasn't been a great month and a half, honestly. It's been rough. Things have not gone the way we were hoping. Things have been frustrating. The team isn't winning. The news we're getting about the players is not ideal. And people are getting frustrated. So we need some good news, and we got some. It's obviously mitigating bad news, but mitigating bad news is still good news because mentally you put yourself in a state, and that state is dependent on what you hear about what the team is doing and what's going to happen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is going to improve some people's moods. So... Per Pete Carroll yesterday, Tyler Lockett had his hand surgery. So, you may recall that when the injury happened, immediately after that 49ers game, Pete Carroll came out and said of the injury that it was legit. And when he said that, I think most Seahawks fans immediately started fearing the worst. <clears throat> when Pete Carroll says an injury is legit it means something might be getting amputated. It means the guy might have his career over. When he says legit, it's legit. So I think people got really concerned about that. I think people were really worried about Lockett. But after the surgery has ended, it looks like things are not as legit. And I mean that in the most positive way possible because the surgery apparently went perfect. And... <clears throat> because of that, there is a chance, it sounds like a real chance, that Lockett will miss only the one game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, that's a hell of a game for him to miss, but that Jets game, which by the time we get to that game is likely going to be a must-win game, that would have been a hell of a game for him to miss as well. So, if Tyler Lockett makes it back for that, I think, January 1st game against the New York Jets and can play and can contribute, and can help us try to win that game, and then also be ready for the next week's game against the Rams, then that's certainly better than the alternative, right? When I heard that he broke a bone in his hand, I, of course, assumed, well, he's just going to miss the season now. There are only three games left. And then we heard, well, two games. And I was like, well, I don't know how much that's going to help us. I don't think that's going to be enough. That last game might not mean very much for us when we get there. But now only one game? If Tyler Lockett only misses one game, then we have gotten very fortunate, and that might be enough to tip things. I went over the scenarios a couple days ago in a video, but basically, if the Seahawks win two of their last three, the odds are actually in their favor. Not by a lot, but by enough to where we can reasonably expect a few things to go our way and nine and eight to be good enough to get in. It's very reasonable, actually. So if Tyler Lockett can tip the scale of that upcoming game against the Jets, then that's huge. And that is actually something that he can do to help this team beyond just his own individual accomplishments. Because I already talked about it a little bit here. Um, I'm not a huge stat hound here, but I did acknowledge that it was too bad that Lockett's um, hand broke or he broke a bone in his hand when he was just barely short of a thousand yard season. It would have been his fourth straight and it would have been a really impressive accolade in his career when you consider that he had to change quarterbacks this offseason and he also had to deal with an offense that I don't believe is really well suited to his skills. So now he may have two games to get there instead of just the one. And the one game, by the way, very good chance it would have amounted to, uh, counted for very little, right? Because you're talking about a game to maybe save you going eight and nine. That's not going to be good enough. Now we can actually have the conversation of, hey, maybe, maybe that game will actually amount to trying to get into the playoffs here because you beat the Jets or maybe you beat the Chiefs. But that conversation obviously has nothing to do with Lockett now. But I do think it's cool that this is going to give him an opportunity to get up around 90 catches and 1,100 yards. He's just got to go out there, play to his abilities, get targeted, which it's not like Geno's been having any problems targeting Lockett so far this year. He uses him plenty. 
And if he's physically able to help this team win, then that's great news. That's very exciting. And I'm happy to hear it. So Lockett had what the surgeon called a perfect surgery. Don't know exactly what that entails, but what it does mean is that while it's really unfortunate, you're not going to have Lockett against the Chiefs. That game could be a shootout. You need Lockett to try to win a shootout. <clears throat> if you get him back for the Jets, if you get him back for the Jets, and then also, of course, the Rams, then that's more than good enough. And I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. That, to me, changes how I feel about these next few games. There isn't a whole lot about these Seahawks that works that isn't their passing attack. And losing Lockett would have been a big blow to the passing attack, but now, maybe we're not. And if we have to win some of these games 40-35, to 35, then that's just the way we're going to have to win them right now. But really happy for Lockett as well, obviously. He's a great guy. He's been one of our best players this year. He's proven himself... I mean, I've talked about this before, but he's proven himself as a player beyond what I thought he was before. And I, I, of course, thought highly of him. I thought he was great. But for him to be playing in a new offense with a new quarterback and still producing at about the same level he did with the old offense and the old quarterback is incredible. And maybe we were wrong concerning our priors about the quarterbacks, but even that being the case... I always thought that Lockett benefited tremendously from his report with Wilson. No report with Wilson this year, and no problem. So that's been great. I, I know 538 has a, um, and I think ESPN as well, uses some advanced metrics to calculate how good receivers are at like getting open, catching the ball, etc. And Lockett, he's right there at the top with the best receivers in the league. Like, uh, 538 uses some kind of weird aggregate receiver score where they combine getting open and catching passes and yards after the catch to evaluate receivers. And even though Lockett's yard after the catch score is one of the worst in the league, I think he's still overall a top 10 receiver. So nobody gets open like Lockett and nobody is producing like Lockett. So it been a great year for him. I was really bummed out just for him as a person when it sounded like his season might be over. And even if he was just going to miss those two games, that still basically amounts to, oh, he's going to be back just in time for it to not matter that much. But now there's a real possibility it will matter. And I'm excited for it, and I'm hoping that we're not rushing him back. It's a broken bone in your hand, so it's not like a hamstring. It's not like a... Uh, a tendon. It's not like an ankle or anything like that. So I'm not so worried about that. But obviously, you're going to be holding your breath a little bit when he gets back. But hopefully he gets back against that Jets team with a chance to help this team salvage the season. Okay. See you guys later, Go Hawks. Good news, people. We need some good news right now. We've got it. It'll do. All right. See y'all later today.